first. When a player uh, like like Ryan, who you guys have known, been able to do it before, when he has the kind of a rut where he's struggling like this, I guess how do you as a coach talk to him, and, and how important is confidence for for a place kicker? I mean, obviously, confidence is huge. Um, you know, and, and the way in which you approach it is is. You know, I've always thought that, that to get the most out of any player, you got to push the right buttons. And for for a, a guy who's struggling, um, piling on, from my perspective, certainly isn't going to help the situation. Um, being analytical, looking at what the symptoms are or what the causes and symptoms are of of the of the misses, and then um, encouraging uh, because you know nobody wants to be successful more than he does. Um, and I know, I mean, Saturday he's out there working again. Um, you know, we landed at 4:30 in the morning. He was out on the practice field. So, um, you know, th this is a, this is a, a young man that takes a lot of pride in his role. Um, he's obviously disappointed about how the game went the other day. And and my job is to do what I whatever I can do to help support and encourage and get the best out of him. And and that's our role as a coach at, at really any position that you're coaching. Brendan had just asked um, Coach Fuller about uh, Brendan Gant on uh, coverage units. I mean, is that something, was he like that last year? Um, and, and what is it? Is it just effort or is it, you know, what makes him special in that role? Well, you know, Brendan's a guy that, that through the course of this offseason um, into training camp and then early here in the, in the season has really uh, developed a, a role for himself on special teams and now it's becoming an increased role on, on defense but um, it is it starts with the effort you know this is this is a guy that that has a lot of desire and a lot of want to and a lot of a lot of kip coverage is that and uh, you know it just the consistency keeps showing up from him um, and and that's what you need to have have good cover units those tough kids that that um, play fast that are physical that uh, have the right mindset to get down the field and cover and and uh, BG has done a, a tremendous job here in the first couple of weeks and um, just look on adding to that as we go forward. When a guy like Jared Verse goes down, I guess like on a personal level, how you know kind of heartbreaking is it to see him go through that? And then as a coach, do you tell the guys that I mean, is the game plan stay the same, or do you kind of have to realize that maybe they don't have the same skill set and kind of change things uh, on the fly there? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. You know, in terms of the personal, um, you know, when, when Jared goes down, you know, your first thought, uh, especially, you know, when it's your own player and you have that, that relationship is, um, you know, empathy and sympathy for, for him in the moment because obviously very disappointing. I know he was very excited about the game and the stage and you don't want to see that happen to anybody. Um, but then very quickly you kind of have to redirect um, to, to what now, what's the plan? And, um, you know, I thought, you know, collectively, the guys did a nice job uh, who came in and their reps increased. You know, Pat Payton's reps increased, Leonard Warner's reps increased, Derek McClendon's reps increased. Um, all, all part of that being the fact that, that Jared wasn't there uh, beyond, you know, the beginning of the second quarter. Um, you know, in terms of changing the plan, um, you know, I think even even if that had never happened with Jared, you're always trying to coach to the strengths of of the guys who are out there. And guys have different skill sets, and, and Jared's is obviously different than some of the other guys. Um, so all I wanted those guys to do is go out there and play their best game, um, not try to, to be somebody else or something that they're, they're not. Um, just go out there and compete at the highest level they could possibly compete. And, and I thought guys answered the call well. Pass rush against Malik Cunningham. What, what was your strategy with pass rush? Well, you know, it's one of those things where you you, you want to be very smart in terms of, of how you approach it because we do play a match coverage style. Um, on the back end, so uh, it puts a little bit more stress on the front four to make sure that we're really rush lane discipline in terms of how we rush. Um, so, so there's that balance of being aggressive and and making good choices. And you know, like for example, I thought at the end of the first half, Derek McClendon had a nice rush there, was able to get a sack. He was able to, to take the opportunity and, and make the most of it. Uh, then there were some times where we were trying to just make sure we kept him in the pocket um, because you know I, we, we have respect for him obviously as a thrower, but uh, we knew that he could he could hurt us uh, you know scrambling and running around, and we wanted to limit those non-designed quarterback runs. There was already going to be enough designed quarterback run or quarterback draw, but you know being able to try to keep him in the pocket as much as we possibly can was was part of that plan.
I know with how, how efficient the offense has been, I think Alex has only punted, what, seven times in, in three games. But I think if he qualified for the national leaderboard, he'd be in the top 20 nationally. I guess what growth have you seen from him? And I guess how does he kind of adapt to maybe he's not having to be used as much as he did those first two years? Yeah, you know, he, I'm, I'm, I say it next to him on every third down. And, uh, you know, he's, he's the ultimate team player in terms of, like, every time we convert, he kind of gives me a little fist bump, and, and he's excited about it. I don't, I don't think there's any part of him that wants to be the, the star of the show um, because, obviously, that means that, um, that, we're, that we're not as efficient as, as we would like to be offensively. So, um, but when he gets his opportunities, he wants to make the most of them. Where I saw a lot of growth from him really was, um, obviously, he didn't hit the ball the way he wanted to on his first punt the other night. And he was able to come back and, and self-correct and kind of analyze what, what it was that, that wasn't uh, right about the first one and, and make the adjustments that were necessary. And they ended up having the next three, I thought, were pretty well hit, hit balls. And uh, we were able to flip the field over on two of them, especially on, on both those covers by Brennan that we talked about earlier. Some of the young defensive linemen who got to play, uh, I mean, they can practice all they want. I mean, you can practice and practice and practice. But how good is it for them to be out there for a full series and, and just 30 or 40 snaps? And how much do you think they'll be able to learn from that? Oh, you know, I, I think I think the game experience is critical. Um, you know, I, like Patrick Payton, I'll use him as an example. He played 34 snaps, I think, in the game. Um, that was by far the, the most snaps he's ever played in the game. I think it's probably more snaps than he's ever combined for in his career. And, uh, you know, with, with every opportunity out there, we talked a lot over the last couple of days of just some of the things that, that he learned and saw and things that he thought he did well and things that he, he knows that he can improve upon. So I think the game experience is, is, is critical. Um, um, you know, you don't you don't necessarily want it to happen that way, but that's why you want to have great depth. And, and one of the things I do feel like at the defensive end spot is we do have depth. As a coach, I guess like your your first job is to be a communicator, and, and you know when your defensive ends come off the field, you can you know you're talking to them, you're criticizing them, you're live on the spot. But when it comes to kickers, like we're left to believe that they're best just to be left alone. Like, how did you develop over the years? I guess your personal philosophy when it comes to communicating to your kicker in game and. Are they all different, or how, how do you try to manage things in game when a guy's going through some stuff? Uh, you know, to a certain extent, they're all, they're all a little bit different. Um, probably more uh, than any other position group, they have great self awareness in terms of why things happen the way they happen, because um, it's such a unique skill set that they have. Um, you know, after a, most of the guys I've ever coached, after any miss or miss hit you can ask them what happened and they'll tell you exactly what happened. It's not it's not like a position player where things sometimes can happen so fast they don't they don't know exactly what happened. Like they know why they pushed the ball or they pulled the ball or whatever the case might have been. Um, so it's talking through how do we fix it and you know, like I was saying earlier, you, you try to push the right buttons to get the best response. Um, and that's true at any position. You know, sometimes guys need an arm around them and tell them, hey, next time I know you're going to get it. Sometimes guys need a little bit more of a firm talking to. And I think that's just relative to the personality type and the situation in the game. You know, missing a kick at the end of the game, you know, if I go over and start carrying on yelling, who's that really for? I mean, obviously, we know, he knows, we know that was, that was a critical point in the game. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not going to be one that ever puts on a show just to look, I can yell at this kid. I mean, he, he did the very best that he could at the time, and no one felt worse about that, that than he did. So, um, you know, our job is to continue to build all the players in our program and trying to help them be the best that they could possibly be. I wanted to ask you about continuity on the starting on the on your front four. Um, you obviously lost Love it before the game, and then first during the game. Um, how important is those guys with Fitz having played together with the guy next to him? And what can you do, given the circumstances you're in, to improve that? Sure. You know, that's, that's a good question. Now, the, the one thing about the defensive line that's probably a little bit more unique than other position groups is we do rotate at a high rate throughout the course of practice and in most games. You know, different than a, than a lot of position groups, we will play two plus deep in the rotation. And uh, continuity is important in terms of the communication aspect of it, but job responsibility doesn't really change. So you do have the opportunity to kind of plug guys in in different spots without really losing a lot in terms of that. Um, 
you know, the communication piece of it is, is critical because guys get used to communicating with each other. But, um, you know, fortunately we have some, some pretty good depth up front. And, uh, you know, and it, it's great that we had it because we needed it the other night for sure. Go to Brendan for the last one. Uh, through, uh, through three games, the kickoff coverage unit is great as one of the, the better ones in the country. It's kind of a simplistic question, but why? What are you guys doing particularly well in that phase? Uh, you know, I think, I think two parts of it. I think... Uh, on all special teams units, but particularly that one, um, you know, finding the right people to put in the right spots is always critical. Um, and, and I do feel good about the, the group that we have out there. And then number two is the speed. Um, you know, the speed has is, is, is really showed up. Um, you know, we recruit fast. We want guys to play fast. Um, and, and speed is, is an overwhelming factor in, in, in terms of uh, why I feel like we've had success early on in the year so far on kickoff. And, uh, you know, it's something we want to continue to build upon. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. In the second half, um, especially in the last few drives, it seemed like you guys had a lot of PBUs and huge moments, Shaheems and Akeems, and um, there were several. What's the balance there between, like in Shaheem's case, I mean, if he doesn't make that play, it could be bad news. I mean, you know, how do they, what's their decision making process and how well did they attack the ball? Yeah, I think we call it gloving the ball, and, you know, we're in a lot of match coverage, so that's going to happen a lot, you know, that you're going to be in phase. And, you know, there were some critical plays there. Kalen Deloche had one, Jamie had one, Akeem had one, Shaheem had one, um, just a lot of, one-on-one -on -one combat plays around the football. So, you know, those are plays that we expect to make. You know, we have to make if we're going to be a good football team. And it was in critical times last night or on Friday night, our guys stepped up and made those one-on-ones, and that, that was critical. Kind of going off that, Adam, it seemed like there was a settling down of sorts on the defense. Uh, was that just a matter of guys kind of getting used to the speed of, of that team, or was there anything drastically, schematically that was done to, to settle them in? Yeah, I mean, we missed too many tackles Friday night, um, for sure. You know, we you know, probably gave up over 150 yards of missed tackles, and, um, you know, that's nowhere near where we want to be. Um, you know, some credit to them, too. They had good open field runners, um, but we, we've got to cut those numbers down significantly. You know, the proudest thing of it was just you know, there were ups and downs throughout that game, but our guys settled down throughout it. And, um, you know, there wasn't, you know, blank stares. It wasn't looking around. There was more of eye contact and, you know, guys reassuring each other when they made a mistake, this is why it won't happen again. And, um, you know, that's affirming for me, you know, to be on the sideline. And, you know, in the past, it's usually been me, you know, trying to not only address and, 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 and fix things, but also uplift people. And, you know, that, that's changing. And uh, our guys are taking ownership of it. And I think that came to why, why it got steadied there at one point. You know, you know, it was a game, you know, we had three three and outs, we had three takeaways, had a fourth down stop. Those were all good things, but it was some of those in-between moments that we've got to get settled down a little bit. You talk about the missed tackles. I don't know if you even factor in what Malik does because it seems like it's, uh, I mean, it's, he seems uh, like a different kind of runner than, than maybe you would see. And is it, is it one of those things where you just have to be on the field with it to really know? And how did Kalen do as, as kind of that spy? Uh, well, you know, we kind of had multiple people, you know, at different times. I mean, listen, when you play against really good players, whether it's a wide out um, that we'll get this week, you know, or last week uh, with the quarterback, you know, and each game offers different um, situations that you got to really put attention to. You got to make sure that you don't over put attention so you're weak in other areas too. But, you know, listen, when you play against guys that play at certain speeds that you don't replicate all the time, it's challenging. But that's why you recruit really good players. And that's why you try to develop them so that in those moments when you have to go make a play, because there were times that I thought we did a really good job of rushing the passer and containing him. You know, even on that last play that Kevin picked the ball off, we had Patrick Payton and, and D-Mac did a good job breaking the pocket. Then Jared Jackson stayed on his feet and kind of altered the throw. And that's all about trying to play team football. Um, to your second part, Ira, you know, Kalen, you know, he's one of our best open field tackle players. And, uh, you know, he wasn't always that Friday night. He would admit that, you know, and, you know, some, but he had some really good plays too. It's just, it's for us, it's to constantly continue to push the tempo that we're playing fast enough um, playing smart enough, 
and just in those moments of those space plays of making sure that you know we have good angles and you know we don't get you know over speed on some of those plays you know and you know I think it comes down to some of the pursuit but just you know angles and the fundamentals of how you play when you play against really good players you'll come back and sit on the bench and say well this happened and this happened and when you really take a look at it, it's like no this is how it played this is exactly how we thought it would play and this has to be your reaction okay coach I got it because speed does that to you you know it does that to offenses all of a sudden when a guy blitzes with unbelievable speed offense will think it's something different it's really the same stuff it's just the guy doing it plays with an un unbelievable amount of energy and speed that it's it looks different and uh, I think that's an important thing to continue to process for us. Um, you know, you mentioned team play. Um, losing Jared Verse in the second quarter was rough. Um, how, how do you think? Who, who do you think stepped up? And um, how do you think a team overall performed after that? Um, you know, loss. Yeah, I mean, you don't want anybody to go down, but that's inevitable, unfortunately, in this sport. Um, it just created more opportunity for Pat Payton, uh, Derek McClendon. You know, Dennis Briggs played. You know, 50-50 inside and outside um, with a couple of guys that we lost inside too. So just creates different roles, and it's our job to manage that in practice to make sure the guys are getting the right snaps. But listen, we've recruited so that if guys get banged up or ding, there are guys in place. You know, Leonard Warner had more snaps. Patrick Payton, those two had significant more snaps than they had the previous two games. Um, and some of it was deserved, you know, but some of it just comes with opportunity sometimes when somebody does go down that's eating up mo most of the snaps. It seemed like Louisville was a fairly consistent push off, off the point of attack. Uh, is that something that is just based on their scheme with the, with the zone stretch stuff that kind of allows for that? Or is that something that has to be better with the attacking unit moving forward? Yeah, most of it wasn't even stretch plays. It was just kind of downhill inside zone stuff. And some of it got just misfit. You know, it was just guys playing with each other. and. You know, in some of it was just they did a good job. And, you know, we've got to be better in some of those instances, you know, especially in the run game that was uncharacteristic of our front um, and something that we've obviously got to fix and something that we've got to improve upon, and that will be addressed. It seemed like maybe the best stretch of the game was kind of for the defense in the immediate aftermath of Jordan's injury. I know he plays on the other side of the ball. Coach Neville talks about response. Do you think that's something, I mean, probably could have gone either way where that's where response showed up of the team? I mean, it was it, two things there, right? First of all, you, you want to teach the guys that no matter what happens, stay focused on your job. But you also preach team and unity and togetherness. And so it's all the same, right? And, you know, just like what we talked about when, when we had a touchdown in game one of a young freshman, the whole team came together. Like, don't be naive to think that that doesn't mean something to everybody. And, you know, when your quarterback goes down, um, you know, it's just like if we turn the ball over, not trying to compare those things, but, you know, when we have to go and take the field and just like the offense picked us up sometimes um, or the kicking game has picked both sides up this year, you know, that's part of being a good football team. You know, we go out there and practice, you know, offense wants to win, defense wants to win, um, but part of winning is when one side is maybe losing some momentum, the other side picks it up or they play off of each other in a positive way as well. So. You know, we don't want anybody to go down, but it was it was good. The most encouraging thing throughout that game was to see our guys' response throughout, you know, adversity. I mean, we were on the road, um, guys were going down, and, you know, they were playing better than us um, at multiple phases. But to see our guys stick with it, stick with the plan, um, it didn't take anything over the ordinary to change, but just our guys stayed with it. They kept punching, uh, and they kept fighting, and, you know, we find ways to win games right now. I guess you kind of answered it there that you guys just kept punching, but just, you know, late game defense was something that we asked you about coming out of, out of game two and the way you guys played, you know, on Friday night late game defense, it, you know, seemed very much more improved. I, mean, I guess what can you, what can you credit the, the better execution to? Is it simply just staying with it and, and keep punching or was there a certain, was there a growth and maturity that maybe you guys entered Friday night? With I think there's a confidence time? at the end of the game, you know, but that's built out there, you know, and, you know, our guys believed it. Um, you know, you go through two minute scenarios every week and you say, listen, this is what you're going to get. And, you know, sometimes the guys just got to trust it, you know, instead of, well, what if this, what if that? Um, and, you know, like I said, there were multiple guys and, you know, there was a fourth and two play that we probably should have had them down. It should have never have gone to that point. Uh, but it did and our guys kept playing and, you know, it was a credit to the front. They created pressure and, you know, everybody stayed on their people and that was important. Uh, and then Kevin made a great play at the end, you know. So um, 
the training, the preparation. It's all about building the confidence. But then you got to see that confidence turn in reality and turn into winning football. And we're seeing that now. Um, you know, listen, we want to dominate. We want to go three and out. We want to get takeaways. We want to score on every drive. Um, and that's got to be our mission. And that's got to be what the end result has to be. But it's still how you do it. And I think our guys are connecting, not being satisfied with just winning the game and more trying to find ways to help so that we have those three and outs. We have those touchdown drives. We have that where you play great football with the 11 guys on the field, no matter who's out there. But our guys know what it looks like right now. It's about trying to replicate that each series. And um, that's hard to do, but the great teams do it. And they do it for 12, 13, 14 series a game. And that's what we have to demand, and that's what we need to get out of this football team. Kind of a two-part about the corners. Uh, first of all, Renardo, obviously, as a tackler, he seems to be doing really well. How, how, how is he doing as a, as a starter corner? And then the other spot with, the, with Duke not being available all the time, uh, and are you trying multiple guys? Is, are, are the younger guys, are they getting close to pushing for playing time, or is it pretty much the, the older guys still? Yeah, I, think, I don't think I'll ever say this is what it is uh, because it's constantly competition, truthfully. Um, you know, Duke being down, like, he gave us his guts in the LSU game. And just we're trying to get him back. Um, just I don't want to keep going backwards by sending him out there. Um, so, I mean, he played three or four plays in that game. He did not play much. Um, and partly even those plays were just, you know, we had played a decent amount of football there. You know, Renaro's helping us on special teams. He's doing a really good job in coverage right now. You know, even the PI that he had was just a one of those – Good quarterback gets in a little bit of space, and people overreact to a play. And uh, him and Akeem both on that play. Uh, but you know, for the most part, when Renaro's been in one-on-one -on -one coverage, he's done a really good job, and he's he, he's strong. Uh, he's strong around the ball, and he's a really good tackler. You know, the other corner spot, you know, kind of rotated with Greedy and Jerrion Jones throughout that game, uh, and Kevin played nickel most of the game. Uh, but you know, that rotation, you know, with Duke being out was like that. But the young guys do, I mean, listen, I think we've got two really good young players. Um, you know, we're seeing it with Shaheem in his second year really starting to take off. Uh, I don't think it'll take all that uh, for these guys. Sam's doing a great job with kickoff returns. You know, Azari, is, he's doing a really nice job. It's just about constantly trying to improve on the things that need to uh, for that group. And, you know, opportunity will come. And there'll be a time in this season that you're going to see some of these guys out there together. And it's going to be critical that they play well. Boston College is really going through it on their offensive line right now in terms of injuries. The fact that maybe you won't know who their starting five is going to be, does that make it easier for you guys just to focus on who you have to be and just worry about your guys' responsibilities? And just your, your thoughts on Phil Dracovic and Isaiah Flowers as well. That was a lot of question. Yeah, I mean, it's more of a statement. Yeah, statement, question, question. OK. Um, listen, it's today and last night is very much about them from a standpoint of like you're trying to find the identity, who it is. They have a new play caller, same quarterback, same dynamic receiver, you know, different people up front. So, you know, you're, you're always trying to identify who, who the threats are, what their strengths are, and trying to work through all that. Um, the second part about their quarterback, you know, he's played in this league for, for three years now, and he's been successful. And, um, you know, I think him, you know, he gave us some problems last year just getting out of the pocket and creating. I mean, we probably hit him as much as we've hit a quarterback. And, you know, it was hard to bring him down. And so, I mean, he's a leader for them. And he's somebody that's been really productive in this league. And then number four, Flowers, is one of the better playmakers in our league, if not the country. And you can see a concerted effort for them to try to get him the football. He's carrying the ball behind the line of scrimmage more probably than he did last year. Um, you're still seeing the down the field throws to him. Uh, you're still seeing some of the intermediate routes of trying to get him the ball running laterally as well. So, I mean, those are two veteran playmakers in the ACC. And, um, you know, everybody's got injuries at this point in the year. And, you know, I'm sure they're not trying to make any excuses. They're just trying to get better from it just like we are. And so, you know, I'm looking forward to the preparation this week. Brendan, to the last one. The last one. No pressure. Uh, so for, for Brendan Gant, he's expanded his role throughout the season. He's got more comfortable at the linebacker, contributing on special teams. I guess what have you seen from him to really buy into this position change and to find ways to, to contribute? I mean, I told him at the end of the game that he inspires me. 
I mean, to see what he did on those two coverage units and go down there and make those open field plays and then see his energy on the sideline on a game that, I mean, listen, you know, Brandon Gantt was a starting safety here for a number of games. And, you know, now he's a backup linebacker giving us 10 snaps. But, like, it's a great lesson to be learned from a lot of people, including coaches. You know, when somebody just makes a decision to just be better consistently every day and not worry about the outside noise, not worry about, you know, what position he's playing or what jersey number or, or what his reps look like, and he really focuses on self-improvement. Like, Brennan Gant played 10 snaps at linebacker, and that's probably going to go up. You know, he's just – he's sticking to the plan, and he's showing up every day. He's trying to help his teammates, and he's focusing on improvement. And he's becoming a really important player on this football team right now this year. Thanks, guys. You, See you guys. Coach, when um, you know when Tate gets thrown into a situation like that uh, at halftime, do you is that a situation where coaches spend a lot of time with the quarterback going back out for the second half, or do you let him talk to the players mostly and, and you guys do your coach stuff? I mean, how do you handle that situation? Yeah, I mean, I guess the synat the the the, the storyline would be if there was some big speech or or there was a moment where everybody came together and rather not not really, man, he. He put the work in all week, you know, and, and the week before. So the speeches and motivation don't mean nothing if he didn't put the work in in practice. So what he did a good job was, was being locked in in practice. And when his moment came and it was an opportunity came, he was ready for it. But if he didn't put the work in before, it wouldn't have mattered. So that's what, you know, coach does a good job of preaching is you don't never know when your moment's going to come. But just make sure you're prepared for it. He was just prepared for it. Was there a moment that you saw Tate that kind of just clicked for him, like you know, in the game? Because obviously he came out, struggled a little bit in the first half. Mm -hmm. Was there a moment you just thought kind of clicked for him? Well, no, I mean, I wouldn't say, you know, of course, you know, you only have what you have to go off of. But I mean, on that play, he got hit, you know what I mean? So, like, I mean, struggle is a, is a tough word. I think, you know, he knew the game plan coming in, he knew how we wanted to attack. We know his strengths, and the offense is built to have the strength of the players. So, you know, I mean, I, he came out and did his job. You know, you know, that's all we ask him to be is be yourself. You don't have to be more than you. You don't have to I mean the work you put in the show and be yourself when you go out there. There wasn't like a like a, a an eye gazing moment like this is, you know, man, I, I think when he came into the huddle, coach said, take a deep breath. Let's go to work. And that was it. Let's go play. On the, uh, the second touchdown, the ultimate game winning touchdown, mm -hmm. can you just walk us through like, what the play call was and it seemed on trained eye that it was as perfectly executed as possible by both quarterback and receiver? Well, Tate did a good job because, you know, uh, that wasn't the first option. So, you know, he, the first option was taken away, and that was the second option. He got a good job with his eyes and getting back to it, and he delivered a good ball. I mean, and that's what he talked about. None of this works unless Tate was mentally locked in in practice, understands the game plan, and this is – Tate's not he, – he's been in for a while with us. So he knows what's going on. He understands the expectation of the offense, so he did a good job. But that was just him doing a good job of – First thing he's taking away, what's my second option? He got to and threw a good ball. Coach, I guess, you know, part of the reason you guys are able to absorb these injuries on the offensive line and still continue to perform well is because you kind of established the fact that everyone's just got to be ready to go. But mm -hmm. when, when these things start piling up, I mean, is there any point where, I don't know, at least internally you get a little bit discouraged? I mean, does he got like Robert go down? Or uh, is this simply just the, the fruits of you kind of staying firm on the guys that you're able to continue to perform well? Well, no, those guys got a good, like, it's, it's the same thing we just talked about with Tate. When your opportunity comes, are you ready for it and have you prepared for it? That's the same as players and coaches. So I got to make sure we have a good plan when these things happen that it's not a moment of what are we going to do. If we get to a moment of what we're going to do, then I did a poor job, you know. Now, so I got to make sure we understand if a guy goes down, who's going in, what's expected, and were they given enough reps during the week to be able to perform. And um, so that's what we do, you know. And, of course, nobody wants these, these players to get hurt. That's not the goal. You know, we feel bad for that and all that kind of things. But, you know, the game, we always say it's a 100% injury rate. I mean, if you play this game long enough, eventually you'll be hurt. You can ask anybody that plays it. So we just want to make sure we have a plan moving forward and we give guys the confidence to go out there and perform when that number gets called. There are a lot of six, seven guys out there playing basketball, doing different things. Mm -hmm. How rare is it for Johnny to do what he does in terms of blocking, running routes, you know, the things he can do on a football team? Well, Johnny's a good player. I mean, he's like, you know, of course we're going to see the highlight plays, but when you look at plays away from the ball, like you talk about blocking, being engaged in practice, and guys that get to come out of practice, we've seen Johnny do this. So it wasn't like an overly celebration. We were happy he got to display the work he's been putting in. But no, Johnny's a little different, man. You talk about that height, 
size, strength, mentality. And that's what I want to give more credit to anything, his mentality. I saw it in mat drills when he first got here. He made the first couple of mat drills, he was struggling. But that's going to tell the, that, that told me who he was because he bounced back and started working hard. He didn't let it get the best of him. So when I saw that, I knew Johnny was going to be fine. So, yeah, we, we'd like to get some you know, bigger guys in here from that basketball court, but I understand both ways. What's the value of having someone like Darius Washington, who, because mm -hmm. I've talked about this before, can play five spots? For him to be ready, I guess, right. for that moment, how, how important was that? When Darius played a lot of reps to tackle in this program, so it wasn't like some big, you know, speech or anything. He's, Coach, I got it. You know, the biggest thing for Darius is he's developed as a center. He's been the center. He played starter at center. He's played a lot of guard, and he's tackle position. I mean, that's normal for him. He played that for the last two years as a starter. So him getting in there was no big adjustment. He was fine. He was ready. I mean, he's that's what you know he he can do it. We'll go to Avalon first. You know, in the second half there, I, I don't know. It seemed like you guys really were able to keep Louisville off balance. I mean, just in terms of being able to take deep shots with Johnny, running the ball well effectively. Just, mm -hmm. I guess, how fulfilling is it for, as a coaching staff, uh, you know, to, to be able to call what you guys want to call and be able to execute what you guys want to execute despite a uh, defense, you know, kind of being on their heels? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I guess the question is, you know, how do we feel about executing? We, we, we fully expect it, you know, and, and so we expected us to execute when we came out of the second half once everybody kind of settled down. Credit to Louisville, you know, they did some things the adjustment wise to make sure they threw us off a little bit too. They did a good job. Coach Brown's a good coach. But what I like about the players is when you give them the adjustments, they understand them. They're not looking at you with that blank stare like, what are you talking about? You know, if they can, when you give them the adjustment, hey, we're doing this tweak, we're going to change this, hey, they're doing this a little different than what we planned all week. If they can get it and you see that eye gaze of understanding, then you know you'll be fine. You know, if they don't have that eye gaze of understanding, that means I did a poor job of preparing them for the moment. So the players were locked in, you know, we were seeing the field well, and it wasn't a huge, like, there wasn't a huge adjustment at halftime. It was just more of, you know, this is what we think they can work, you know, and things that we already had in the game plan that we didn't have to go you know, draw up in the dirt, a new play and all that kind of stuff. And Tate had a full picture and understanding of what we were trying to do. So it's just, that's the expectation. That's why they work. That's why we spend so much time with them because in those moments, we got to be able to perform. Uh, how'd you feel like the, the backs did overall? And particularly, um, Trey had some huge runs late in that game. Yeah, he did. You know, we, we try to use, you know, we talk about the running game being like body blows, man. Eventually that thing's going to pop, you know, you're going to, you're going to be able to come. And that's what you want to see. You want to see the run game get stronger as the game goes along. And I think those backs do a good job out of running hard at the end to be able. Now, we got to do a better job of closing games in those four-minute situations. That's something we're going to talk about. And in the end, finishing runs where we're not as short on the goal line, where we get to finish those things in the end zone. But I think as the process is going, we're starting to see improvement with us running stronger as the game goes along. You talked about Johnny a little bit so far. Just his, mm -hmm. as a play caller, to have the ability for him to uh, win a jump ball to mm -hmm. have this catch radius outside blocking. I guess what does that do to open things up for you guys schematically through the course of a game? Well, he's a problem, you know, and he's going to garner two people, you know, and that's and whenever you have that, it's going to help you because that takes one more guy out the box and, and one more guy with less responsibility. So, but you know, Johnny's going to be a problem no matter if it's one or two people on him. So, you know, if he keeps working like he does, he, he he's a problem out here. Um, Coach Norvell talked about this a little bit, but um, your wide receiver is blocking. Mm -hmm. How important is that to the run scheme and to the offense overall? Man, Coach Dugas does a great job of getting those guys to understand, not just blocking, because anybody can say go block people, but understanding leverage, um, understanding where that ball is going to hit, understanding the timing of the block, and also understanding that that's where most of the holding and, and penalties come from is outside. And they do a good job of maintaining leverage and not getting those devastating holding calls on long runs. But runs don't go past four yards unless the receivers are doing their job. And, and Coach Dugan's got those jobs really buying into it. And, and, and really, they're like the bullies of the offense. I mean, because they're not just blocking. They're trying to, you know, they're taking a whole nother level. So, you know, when we do our offensive meeting, we bring those guys in. We like to showcase and show that stuff, and they're bought into it. You know, even just Johnny, but Micah Pittman. You know, people not mention Micah. Micah out there, I mean, he was at the point of attack on a lot of blocks. And it might not be the devastating throw you on the ground block, but he got the hardest time when that, ro that safety's rolling down. And he got to go meet that guy at the line of scrimmage. So he has some good cuts of that also. So just that room overall has done a really good job of buying into that. And you see that has now opened up. we we'll get more opportunities down the field. You guys brought in a bunch of transfers in the spring. And how important was that those summer months? And how, how far did 
it seems like Johnny and Deuce and, and several mm -hmm. guys made a lot of growth between the end of spring and then the start of preseason. What, who don't get enough credit is the guys that are already on the roster. You know, the Keyshawn Heldens, the Pokey Wilsons, the Malik McClain, the McClain had a big time pledge. Like those guys, when those guys came in here, they embraced them and taught them what to do. You know, it wasn't like a, 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 of course there's competition in practice, we want to get better, but that room, I've really been proud of how that room came together and said, let's just have the best room we can have. Let's bring, bring it out of each other. So not only was it just the summer and the spring and the coaching, I mean, everybody's going to do that. But when you got older receivers in the room, understanding that we just want to have the best product we can put out there and bind into that system, that's been unbelievable. And that's why we've been able to kind of see the fruits of their labor too. Travis, can you evaluate how he played and what he did well? It seems like this is kind of is a continuing right. growth for him. Jordan's a baller. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much really simple. I can put it. You know, whether it be throwing it, running it, understanding the checks of the offense. You know, his toughness has grown tremendously. Like, you know, Jordan's a baller, and, and, and that's going to be displayed every time he steps out there. We have full confidence in him. He's been through the journey to get to this point of his career. So I'm just glad I get to be a part and watch him do his thing. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks.